a world at war. Africa, Yugoslavia, the Middle East. But there's another war you don't hear about in the news. The war in America's ghettos. 96 buildings in the cribs go from A to F. My guns is lethal, but they're not to get back. Make your whole chest be through. And cause you got shot, that don't make you mean. And I seen niggas shot over some cane. And then I seen some get knocked for not knowing the game. Loaded glocks will be keep among us. In case niggas from other blocks trying to creep up on us. We hustle hard on these blocks in these streets and corners. Rep your hood, why? Cause QB made me. Queensbridge, the world's largest housing projects. Just across the bridge from rich Upper East Manhattan. 96 buildings, six blocks, one neighborhood. The richest legacy in hip hop. Home of Marley Mall, The Juice Crew, Nas, Mob Deep, CNN and the realest rapper of them all. Tragedy. Fuck a battle rap, nigga, you could battle this guy. Get the slug press where your main organs at. Long as I'm living, I'll show you the meaning of terrorism. Come on. Like a nigga permanently scarred, locked in prison. Gangster, poet, revolutionary, criminal, paradox. This is his story. The story of pain turned to beauty. The story of Queensbridge. QB. Traj is the one who links all the other QB rappers together. The one who lived all the great Queensbridge moments. So in telling his story, he's telling the story of his hood. How the fuck does he get killed? A war story. So Traj brings a team of war reporters to the bridge. But just days after they start filming, rap star Nori scoops up Traj in Manhattan. 20 gun-wielding cops pull up on him, throwing Traj to the concrete. They don't find the machine guns they're looking for, but Traj has a warrant. So we begin our story from jail. He says, never die alone. You gotta go out, take them with you. You know what I'm saying? If there's a war, take them niggas with you. My name is Tragedy Gaddafi, and you know, I'm from Queensbridge, but um, right now, you know, I'm being held, being detained. The Jakes never worry me as long as I'm free, for my niggas holding packs, nothing less than a G. Crown side of life, foul price to pay, illegal life, trigger trite, till we old and gray. When the flesh dry up, and this world decay, reach heaven in the pearly white, act your right. until then. I'm a shot to the last sin, resurrect through the birth of my son and live again. Yo, 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 this 4111. Kill it shy, which niggas quick when I speak. I quote biblical, preach wise words of wisdom, follow the lyrical. As the stories go, you know what I'm saying, like, Trash Poppins is like one of the illest, illest dudes on this block. He was really heavy in the, in the crime wave, in the stick up game. My father died when he was 18. I never seen him. He never saw me in the physical form. I would have dreams of uh of this man, which at the time I thought was myself. I thought I was dreaming of myself as an older man. My mother showed me a picture, and in my dream, I realized that I was actually dreaming about my father. Like my moms would take me places with her, like, you know, we'd, we'd be everywhere, you know what I mean? We'd, every party she went to, I was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I think I first had the love for music. Every time I hear old jam, I think about us. Made the choice to have me, you love me that much. It's real, back then, mommy, you was a little girl pregnant with me. Feeling all alone in this world, it's valid to see. My pops died at age 18. Like around 11, 12, I'll, I'll 
you know, discovered that my mom was, um, my mom was using drugs. My mom was a heroin addict. I watched my mother go from, uh, you know, having a good job, graduating from college and all that. I would just watch our whole household get turned upside down. Percy! When things were going in my crib, I would always run into the street. I felt a sense of freedom. I felt a sense of belonging. I felt like I belonged there. Moms would like do things to try to keep me in the crib, keep me out the street, and keep me out of trouble, which was ironic to me because I'm like, yo, you know, you in the street, why can't I be in the street? Let me out, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Let me out. She would actually, <laughs> she would tie my, she would tie one wrist to this side of the pole that held up the bed, you know, this wrist to the other one. Once I got one wrist out, I was hood, I was good. You know, I lived on the first floor on Vernon Boulevard, 41st side of Vernon. Once my feet hit the street, I was good. My moms would leave sometimes for days, sometimes weeks. You know, the food would run out. So I'd go up to Associated, walk out with a steak, a box of rice, can of corn, pack of Kool-Aid, box of sugar, and a bottle of ketchup. You feel me? You know, I fry the steak up, hook the rice up, and we was gravy. Everybody ate. I went from going to Associated and Boosting to going stick up. We got a few cats that was out here around. Trash had to be raw with people since he was about 12. You go, you're young, you don't have no money, you go right down the block to Queens Plaza. This side of the bridge is Manhattan, the other side of the bridge, that's the plaza. You go to the plaza and you, you do what we call catch a nick. And sometimes that's what he did. Sometimes I watched him do it. Trad's always been nice. He was like real lyrical from like young. Oh, he's, oh, he's the nastiest, he's one of the nastiest out here. He's the only rap to me. And before I got him to, to rap to in front of the whole class. I stayed with the black composition notebook. Everybody in the knew that. 12, 10 year old guy walking around with a pad, you know, writing rhymes. Not that long ago, I remember being in the studio with Nas and shit. He was like, yo, you know, Used to put a line after every last line of your rhyme. Little niggas just watching me how I wrote on the block. I designed paragraphs like an architect. Yo, done his man little. How he, how he say all of that? He had totally roasted this guy. This guy tried to break a bottle and stab trash because he felt that bad. We over here at the, at the you know, world famous 59th Street Bridge. Park alone just hold a lot of memories in terms of the history, in terms of my history, in terms of the history of Queensbridge. They used to set up the equipment, Disco Twins, right? Molly, the All Brothers, the All Brothers, you White, know what Flash. Saying? White Flash, you know what I'm saying? LES, all them cats. Come get yeah, LES, hot day. Hot day. Just the whole park would just be popping. That's ill. The mothers would come to the DJ booth, and then the DJ be like, "Well, such and such, your mother's at the gate." And it's, it's chaos now because you trying to run away so you don't get a beating. That's the shit that sparked me right there. Just, you know, being in the, in the, in the park and just, just starving, just waiting for your turn. Now you want to cry like, like burn, when burn, will get my turn? Burn, burn. And then you get it and then I was like, wow, hell? He was holding himself down with all like the old school rappers like got in the park jam and just tore it down. It's like, what the fuck? What happened? You know what I mean? It's like, this shit is like, looking like a fucking a graveyard to me and shit now. Before, like, even the projects had so much life in it. The mid-80s. QB's own Juice Crew dominates the rap game, giving Queensbridge worldwide notoriety. Producer Molly Mall is in control. 
that was crazy important, especially for me, you know what I'm saying, because I'm from Queensbridge. We more amped than ever, you know, during that time. Kane, Sham, Biz, Craig G, Shantae, G-Rap. Juice Crew days, baby. Polo. They dominated, and especially with Marley Maul. Yeah, I mean, he dominated in other areas, like with Eric B and Rock Kim, you know. Marley was the fucking king, you know what I'm saying? Marley was a man. Everybody was chasing Marley. Yo, Marley, put me on, put me on. He wasn't really paying me no mind and shit. I guess he had mad motherfuckers running up on him, telling him they could rhyme and all that. I went to the crib this one time in particular, and he told me to come back in 15 minutes. I probably waited maybe 10 minutes, but it felt like five hours. He let me in that time. He got, he got like a certain style and a certain, certain flavor, you know what I mean? A certain little flow. It's kind of hot right now, so I was like, yo, that's a go. Do a beat on, and I just got at that shit, and it was called a tragedy. Couldn't find your money, and your brother was gone. Ran to the kitchen, all you found was a bone. You knew your brother's habit, couldn't decide on his own. Marley used to live right in this building on the second floor, 4114. We used to actually wait for trash to come down so he can play the tape. Lost his wife and lost his friends. The way he started is the way he'll end. Using cocaine again and again. When we recorded it's a tragedy. It was like a demo from the crib. You know, he was telling a little life story. It was a hot joint. A little hot joint for hip hop, you know what I mean? <laughs> Before a tragedy, I was called um <laughs> I was called Jade Ski. <laughs> he was going by J Ski at that time. So I told him. I want you to turn it to tragedy. As a kid, the crazy shit I was doing, motherfuckers was like, yo, you a tragedy, man. My baby grandma? They used to call my husband the hurricane. He used to be a bad boxer, but see, I make music all the time. You get old, you can't box no more. Everybody would know when he started walking around, he had a drink. He knew he was going to terrorize the project. Mess with the World Series on that shit. Tommy Hayes, Cleon Dope. They were wild out and get drunk and carry on and you know the story. <laughs> you know, and then I got to remove myself from the scene. Trash was chasing everybody. Anybody had something to do with music, he was chasing. Maul ain't have enough time for him. I did. Your talent is extraordinary, you know what I mean? You're good, you're ill on the rhyming tip. It's just not all about rhyming. You gotta know the business, otherwise they're gonna take your money. You always have old records and old tapes with beats and shit. So I would go there and like, you know, practice my shit. A couple of times he used to tell me about this kid. He's always stealing and getting busted in the store, so um, I'm gonna bring him home one day, you know, so you can meet him. I had motherfuckers running up on my moms, telling them they was gonna kill me. So my mom was like, yo, you know, you jeopardizing your sister's lives and your little brother's life and my life. You got to go. Oh. Immediately, T, love, boom. Nobody to stay, you stay here. If you eat, you eat here. You family. Crack hit is like it just swept throughout not only Queen but throughout the whole New York City. Crack changed things a great deal. Prior to that, it was coke and dope, you know what I'm saying? But crack was different because little fucking vibe and shit, you could get $10, $20 and shit. You know, people stand outside, make individuals make 5000 I went to the Fed system doing time for that bullshit, so. Queens was just like a, that shit is like a city. It's the biggest housing projects in the world in terms of hustling. It was a gold mine. 
So you had motherfuckers coming from all over taking over our projects and our projects going to war with motherfuckers because they were wanted to come in and try to take over the projects. Hold on, it's a lot that I want to say, but a lot that I can say because this is like... See, back then we had like a cold, a cold in the street. You had like the 40 busters and shit. Some of the big gangsters back in the days, you had Felton. Trent. Kid named Arcade. Smurf. World Fun. Juice. QT. Hot, you had, you had mad, it was mad motherfuckers out there. They was like the most flyest. You know what I'm saying? Keep the hair and ways, keep the fresh ballets, British well, whatever was new they had. We from the hood, like we don't got that much. And like we would see them and be like, yo, I'm gonna be like done. I watch motherfuckers on the corner hustling in the fucking freezing winter cold to get money, risking their life all day. So like to me it was like, yo, I stand on the block and I'm sick pump. And I could just take these shit. I remember fucking with some dudes, probably some Jamaican dudes, you know, me fast and shit, and them niggas catching up with me. They had him for like three days, and they put him in the abandoned warehouse. He was, oh, beat so many times. My shit was like, kapong, kapong. And he was tied to this chair, and he had feces and all that on himself and everything, and the rats was coming on him and eating him. They just took him and drove him in a car and threw him in the East River over there, and he couldn't swim. It was cold around that time. But when I fell in that water, that shit felt like I fell in straight, like I was just putting a big ass ice tray. And then, when I climbed up on the rocks, I had to lay there, cause I'm fucked up. I remember crawling like this. You know what I'm saying, like worming and shit. And it seemed like that shit took fucking forever. God had mercy on all of us, God had mercy on him. That's a miracle right there. Yo, God, the most high got so much mercy on me. I be like, yo man. You be showing me too much love. When you gonna take it back? You could go down. You could get fucked up. And that be it. And that be a rap. I know, you know what I'm saying? All of us know thorough, thorough niggas that did not make it. After the river incident, family Molly did something. You know, Molly was figuring, yo, T know what's good on the streets. So if you fuck with T, yeah, I'ma fuck with him. So and the way you kind of stole them from, from T. You know, I was going back to Molly's laying joints like Live Motivator. That shit was like, now I'm like 14, 15. They was on, uh, I believe, the In Control Volume 1. Tragedy elevates to the exterior. Imperial superior, your inferior. Intelligent trooper, I detect, but I design paragraphs like an architect. Like everybody like idolized him, because he was the littlest, the youngest one out of the whole juice. Yeah, this is before a bad wow, crisscross, a little Romeo, you feel me? MC Sam, all these more, Roxanne, Sean Jay, you know what I'm saying? Tragedy. They had massive. Massive talent, but he was like the one that stood out because he was so little, and then he got locked up. That slowed down his entry into the juice crew. It's a talent right here. This can't be the end. I got locked up for robbery. At that time, that new law passed. If you were 16, you could be, you know, charged as an adult. I went to Rikers Allen as a youthful offender. Rikers Allen, man. <laughs> Have you ever been on Rikers Allen, motherfucker? And I went upstate. You were supposed to be upstate. At 16, upstate. I was locked up with motherfuckers doing double life. Motherfuckers that was never coming home. Monsters, brolic monster niggas. I remember my moms came to see me. My mom looked at the inmates on the visiting floor and was like, baby, you all right? Go inside my cell, a pack of cigarettes on my bed and shit. So I'm like, what the fuck? Nigga trying to claim me or some shit? So I took one of my pencils out the shop and sharpened it by scraping it. Next day, we locked out to go to the showers, and the nigga that put the cigarettes on my bed, this nigga sitting there looking at me and shit, eyeing me up and down and shit. I was like, fuck, I just took the pencil from under my, my, my armpit, just start banging them. 
you know what I'm saying? And it was ill because the pencil ain't even great. Whatever, they rushed me up out of there. I laid up and keep locked for a minute. When they put me in the key block, you know, they ain't really let you out and shit, but after a while, like, they let us out for like an hour and shit. There was another older brother, and he's probably down for like 20 joints. He was a Muslim brother. He gave me some books, you know what I mean, to read. I think the first book was um, Man, Child, and the Promised Land. The next book he gave me was the autobiography of Malcolm X. Now that book, like, really just sparked me. I became conscious, you know what I'm saying? I, I became more aware of myself and my people. Then my man Prince Wally was there. I had got locked up. A few months later, it was an 88 trash I came in. Me and Prince Wally, we just did our bid together. He's like, yo, write me some titles for some songs. Just write me a lot of titles. I used to be writing a list. I go by a cell when they call child. Yeah, this is part two of the tragedy of Gaddafi incarceration in jail is in you. You know what I'm saying? For all the viewers that want to see the truth and the realness. And for all y'all cats out there, you know what I mean? That want to wild up and act up. You know what I mean? Now use your fucking head. This is where you end up. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter if you making records or you getting money or you broke or you whatever you doing, man. You know what I'm saying? It could go down and you could get locked the fuck up. As you see. came home with the state greens on and a BBD burgundy nylon in January. It's freezing. But I didn't even feel a cold. When you get out of jail, man, your adrenaline is so, you just, you know what I'm saying? You're so open, you don't even feel cold. He told me he was locked up and he was watching TV, seeing the videos. He was like, oh shit, damn, I'm supposed to be part of that. Throughout my whole bid, I wasn't thinking about me coming home and making records. I was feeling it because every time I turn around, motherfucker would have a cassette of Kane, or Shan's album. I felt like the shit let me down, you know what I'm saying? Like, hip hop just let me down. He was so quiet, he was into reading books. I fucked everybody heads up. I rolled in college, LaGuardia College, and I actually liked it. I had seen Marley in the bridge one day. He pulled up, he had the red beam up. I'm like, damn, that motherfuckers been doing y'all thing, man, you know what I'm saying, while I was away. He was like, yo, what's up? Let's go in the studio, man. You know, he's like sitting with Big Daddy Kane. He's sitting with, you know, Biz and them bugging out, freestyling. So, you know, he definitely saw a future. I went to T's house. He had Night of Living Bass Heads on VHS and was playing. And that shit just caught me. And I was like, oh, shit, this song is fucking crazy. So, boom, I called Chuck D up. I'm like, yo, man, um, I just want to ask you a question. Who's H. Rap Brown? Who's Asada Shakur? Who's Huey Newton? And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to tell you who these people are. I'm just going to break it down. I'm like, yo, these is gangsters, yo. These are the real gangsters. And the love just came back. You know what I mean? The love, and slowly I stopped going to school. The sessions would get later and later, then I just start banging them out. We did an Intelligent Hoodlum project, which did pretty well for AM and Records. And you know, he just, he was basically rhyming his teaching. Intelligent Hoodlum came out, I was in the Fed system. He was applying what he learned from the streets and from the penitentiaries. He's applying that to his everyday life. Arrest the president, he's the criminal. Arrest the president is basically me taking every motherfucking thoughts from the hood and just compressing it and concentrating it through myself and, and blasting at the president. I rest the president with my shit, black, I'm proud, all that shit. I, I ain't gonna front one time trying to shoot a video, I was a little nigga. I snuck to the River Park, you know what I'm saying, to see him shoot the video and shit. This was before, like, um, this one, now nah, everybody with Mega, before Mega did his bid, this is before all that shit. Trash had a popping on the block. He was the best, you know what I'm saying? Everybody in the hood knew it at the time, you know what I'm saying? One minute he was like this criminal, and then the next minute, like, he had the kufi on in the video with the glasses. And then him and Marley got into a big, bad situation. Because after he came out and did the Juice Crew shit, and he had his money. I heard a story about him running up in Marley crib, putting the gas in Marley, taking the, the, um, the SP, 
SP1200 and it's publishing and all that stuff. So I think that's what, that's what like, you know, like cut the situation off with them too and things like that. My mom was living in Ohio, you know what I'm saying? She had got her life together. And I started working at a promotions company, a marketing company, and I wasn't making no music again, going through my little hate music phase again. I love this. I love hip hop. I can't just I can't just stop like this again. So I go back to the hood. I was really analyzing who's who, what's what. Cause I was looking for the next nigga. We approach the hell this is Queensbridge, where everything happens. We all goes down that. No, this is my home, man. Kill big. Gambino. What's up? Twin. CF to the death. This is how QB get down, you heard? Don Law do what he want. Say what he feel. Can't see it coming down my eyes, cause I'm real. Crime fan, ho. Two steals, put holes in your grill. Thought it was a game, my clip, he caught it. Told you get your shit twisted back with skate and peel the off and the bins relaxing, you heard? It was like, dude, you thirsting for something brand new. Rappers from the street, they rap about Scarface, top of the world. Going from nothing to something. What black little kid in the, after watching that movie, won't say, yo, damn. I ain't gonna start slapping niggas. I'm gonna just start capping niggas. And I seen niggas shot over some cane. Then I seen some get knocked for not knowing the game. I seen sort of punk action, how to explain you. Everybody stashing cracks, little niggas passing death. That's the era of the thug. Young rapper Nas puts QB back on the map with his Illmatic album. He'll go on to sell millions of records. Some say he's not just the best in Queensbridge, but the world. When Illmatic dropped, yeah, I was in QB. What was it like? That was like another, another amp for us. Niggas was like, yo, this is a little nigga from the 40th side of Vernon. A nigga sound just like you. When I first heard Live at the Barbecue, kidnapped the president's wife without a plan. I thought Nas was tragedy. That's to tell you how tragedy is the father of a whole lot of Queensbridge style. And that's no disrespect. You know what I mean? That's just keeping it funky. Nas never had that stuff happen to him in his life. These things were not. This boy is a straight A student. You understand? So he's in the rap game, and he's just going off of his friend's life, you know? But Trash lived that life. I just grew up with my family, my uncles and my my father and stuff. But as soon as he got big, like at least a little bit big, he was around for the first few songs, but then after that, it was like cut off all communication. <laughs> For a minute, he was doing like every video out here, running on the side of the blocks and everything. And then, I don't know, he just stopped coming out here. He betrayed us in a lot of ways, so he's afraid to come here, I think. I wouldn't say he's scared, but I think it's more like, it's just that you got a lot of cats reaching out to him for the wrong reason. Yo, Nas, let me get $1,000. Yo, son, let me bail my brother out of jail. Do this, do that. Son, pay my rent. People gotta realize this is the fruit from his labor and everyone wants to eat off of that. It's not, it's not like that. It can't be like that. Havoc and prodigy of Mob Deep, thug rappers with diehard fans worldwide, now signed with 50 Cent. But before the money and fame, Havoc is a young, aspiring solo artist. Well, I met Trash one day. I was in a candy store on the hill, you know what I mean? I was a little kid. And he ran up on me or whatever. I'm from the candy store, like, yo, I want to battle you. He was mad, tiny, too. And then he was like, nah, shorty, you know, I don't want to battle you. 